Uh, same as always, everyone, keep your lines muted unless asking a question, and we'll hop right in. So go ahead. Tony, I saw you uh, during the water breaks in the, in the game last night. You were real hands-on with the players. It looked like you were enjoying being back on the touchline. How was that experience for you? Uh, it was great. I, I had so much fun. Um, you know, I've been off the sideline for probably eight, nine months now because I went into kind of a managerial role with the, the twos all the way through to the twelves. So to be back on the sideline and get that buzz and have those relationships with the players was it. It was really a lot of fun. Now, if we'd lost the game, I don't know if I'd say that saying that, but I had a good time. The kid, the kids reacted really well, and I had a good time on the sideline. Tony Felipe here. How are you? Hey Felipe, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Congrats on the win. Um, I mean, difficult situation for for any coach to kind of step in. Uh, without a lot of notice and, and try to manage the team in the middle of, uh, you, I mean, USL is actually playing games right now. What was just your first, what was the first thing that you wanted to check off your box when you, when you approached the team and, and had your first training session? Um, I think it was important that I just continued the message that uh, Glassy and Henry had been, had put into the team already. They'd been doing a wonderful job. I'd been at all the sessions. I'd been watching them train. So I was, very, I was very familiar with the squad. Obviously, the players are very young. It's a young team. Probably one of the youngest USL teams out there, especially in the championship. Um, so it was, it was pretty much easy for me to roll in and kind of continue the work. Um, again, like Stephen said, and like Darren said, from top to bottom, we have a mentality about the club that we have to continue in that identity of our club and how we play. It must be in place. Um, so really, it's just more of a continuation but for me personally, it's just about maybe the players who are new to the club, who did not come through the academy, who I haven't coached in the past. Um, it's about building relationships and trust with them so that when I ask them to do something or ask them to go through a brick wall sometimes, they go through it. So really the first three days was about gaining trust from the group and showing them that there wasn't going to be a huge change and that things would continue and obviously looking for our first win. So that was kind of the focus. Hey, Tony, congratulations. Uh, first, you may want to ask Darren about his comment about Newcastle that he made in his Zoom call with us. Uh, second, what kind of guy is Steven off the field? How is he when he's not on the sideline? If you could just give us some insight into his personality and that. Okay. Uh, hi, Doug. Number one, uh, don't really care what Darren says about Newcastle, so I'm going to change my view about them. Um, bitterly disappointed about the Saudis pulling out. But there you go. Um, number two, Stephen. Um, Stephen is, I, I hired Stephen for the academy, obviously, so I really like him. Um, very knowledgeable, massive experience, obviously, on the field. But off the field, he's a very humble guy. You know, he played a great level, had a great career, uh, but he never, he never rubs that in anybody's face. So he's very humble. He's very, keeps himself to himself. He's a family guy, him and his wife. Um, you know, I wish I could tell you that he goes out party until the wee hours, but he doesn't. He looks after himself, and if you look at him, he's in great shape. And he's just a good guy, an all-round good guy who's very honest and very straightforward, which is why he and I have a great relationship on and off the field, um, which makes this a kind of a an easier interim squad to work with because we can bounce off each other and um, – we can, you know, we can talk very freely and very openly and be very honest with each other. But yeah, he's just, he's a good guy with, a, like I said, a, a very, very big drive for success as well. So he suits the club and that's why he was hired here. Hey, well, I want to ask you about uh, Jackson Conway. Um, of course, three goals, in four, <laughs> three goals in four games. He's obviously getting off to a very good strong start. Have a little incident there after his um, goal last night. But, um, you know, really outside of that, You've been tracking him for years as a player that's come through the academy. Um, where do you see his development moving forward, one? And what are some things that you feel he can improve on to be, to not just affect the USL side, but really the first team? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been with Jackson since he was 12 years old. He's played with me and on my squads since then. Um, brought him here when we started the academy. And, you know, he's, he's another one that we weren't sure about at 13, 14, 15. We weren't sure which direction he would take. He made some real advances as a youth um, and ended up 
obviously pushing through and doing really well with the academy and then moving into a professional contract. Uh, you know, he still shows immaturity at times, which is a part of his game that he has to develop. Um, but I think one of the things that, especially with the media and with the way US soccer is set up, we rush talent to the forefront quicker than anybody else. Um, and sometimes a player like Jackson needs needs time, he needs experience, he needs games, and it's not always about getting him in the first team right away. Obviously, our lack of number nines at the moment with Joseph being out would be an opportunity, but sometimes they're just not ready. And if you put them in too early, you can actually take them backwards. So for me, it's a, it's a, it's a process with every single player and coach, to be honest. I believe in a process for coaching as well as player development, but someone like Jackson, he's got a future in the game, but he's got a few pieces that he really needs to fix and improve on if he wants to be a top player in the MLS or in Europe. But that's what we're here for and that's what we work for, to try and get these guys to fulfil their potential. But it's a two-way street. And if they're not ready to work and they're not ready to earn earn their stripes, so to speak, um, it's not an easy task. Hey, Tony, I just had a quick kind of technical question as it regards to the academy and is some of the work that you were doing with them now delegated to somebody else in the system? I assume that's the case, but could you just kind of explain kind of how that is going to filter down? Um, not really. <laughs> okay. <It's>, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I took Matt Lowry with me. So Matt is a really bright young coach who, uh, to be fair, compliments me very well. Um, so I took Matt with me, who was the academy manager. So if there was any trickle down, it would be falling on him. Um, so really, I think between myself and Matt, we're just going to run this all the way through. And obviously, it's it's a good position to be in because I was kind of managing it already. Um, but the pipeline, we feel, goes right through from the academy into USL. Obviously, stops at USL and the first team take over. But there's a lot of clubs in Europe have a their under 23s coach runs their older academy teams as well. So it's a little bit more work, which we're not scared of. I mean, I'm here seven to seven most days anyway. So it's just a little bit more work and a bit more organization up front. Um, but obviously I'm invested in the, in the twos because I really want the twos to do well and show what we can do with the club. So I think as a group, the whole staff in the academy is very good. So I'm not really worried that we won't continue to do what we've already set out to do. Hey, Tony, Felipe again. Uh, so, so now since you're acting manager, we get to ask you questions that go beyond the pitch. Um, how have you approached just the, the USL's protocols with COVID? Are there any concerns that, that you have uh, right now or looking forward, considering the fact that games have been canceled because of some positive tests? Uh, it's a good question. Um, internally, I think the medical team here and the doctors here and the way we are set up is fantastic. You couldn't get any better. Even with our academy starting next week, our academy protocols are of the highest standard. Uh, most youth teams around here and unfortunately not holding the standard. But internally, Atlanta United is doing probably one of the best jobs I've seen across the league. Uh, we were the first academy approved because of our protocols. But with USL, um, it varies from club to club and what how, how willing they are to invest in testing and protocols. But I can speak for us and say that we couldn't do it any better than we've done. And we've had very, very little drama. The only worrying part is if you go to play at a club that don't take it as seriously as we do and don't invest in the protocols as much as we do, that something could happen there. But like I said, coming back here and testing every other day, we, we will be able to, to handle that no problem. But there are concerns with some of the other clubs who may not be taking it as serious as we do. Sure. But we have to start moving forward as best we can. Thank you. Got time for a couple more for Tony. Anything else, guys? Tony, the Owen Wolf was on the bench last night. Of course, his brother Tyler is a homegrown player. Um, what qualities do you see in the player like Owen and the, how can he build on this game currently? Yeah, good question too. Um, Owen's still very young. 
he's 15. He's probably one of the youngest. Actually, he is the youngest kid in that age group. He's a year off being a 2005. Um, so with Owen, Owen's a very bright, um, quick thinker where T Taylor's a bit more powerful and he uses his body a little bit more and his power and he's aggressive, he's aggressive, where Owen is a real smart player, real smooth on the ball, which is probably the reason I couldn't get him into the game last night. Um, because I don't think he would handle that physical, the physicality of Miami and being 10 men. It just wasn't the right game for him to, to bleed him in. But he's shown very well in training, but he's, he's, still a, he's still a young boy. And again, going back to the process, it's important that you nail the, the opportunity when it comes along of when to introduce and give them that chance. But very rarely will they let you down. We've proven that with Caleb Wiley and uh, Gano, Will, Tubbs, who are all very young still, but they don't let you down. It's just choosing the right moment to get them in. But Owen and Tyler are very different players, I will say that. But he does have a future if he continues to develop. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you, Tony. That's going to wrap it up for today. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. But thanks for spending the last hour with us.